Christmas is upon us, and not only do you need to find gifts for all your loved ones, you also need to find the appropriate tags to put on those gifts. You have a 3D printer, I'm going to show you how to design your own tags. I'm Joel, and this is 3D Printing Nerd. I'm telling you kids, it's the problem with wireless mice. They die. Oftentimes, gift tags are overlooked. You either buy them in bulk by the 100 and you just write who the two and who the fro is and you're good to go, or you get ultra creative and you end up spending more time than you want to make the perfect gift tag. Why not use 3D design principles to make yourself some really cool gift tags to show off who you are and what you can do. This is just some examples. I'm gonna show you how to do these, but in order to do stuff like this, I'm gonna need to bring over the computer. Mm. Here we are. We're at the computer. As you can see in front of you, I have these awesome little gift tags that I've designed. So each of these is a separate model from itself. And this one, this is really cool. This is a very multicolored model, or at least it has that uh, it has that chance if you load it up in the Prusa machine. So the goal today is to try and reproduce what we've done right here and to start off, well, let's let's close this out because we're going to start brand new. That's the goal anyway. All right. Uh, in order to start, we're going to need to start with a sketch. So let's bring it right down here. I'm going to hit L for line. And we're going to use this center point. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw half of it and then we're going to mirror it over. And I know I'm going to want it to be 25 on the half cross, and I want it to be 75 in total tall. So if I hit L and I bring this line up to say 50, good. And then I'm going to bring this up because this is another 25, which would make it 75. So along this line, I can maybe go right here and go here. I'll just bring it down right there. There's my shape. I can hit escape. Now I want to go over to sketch and I want to hit mirror. It's going to ask me what I want to mirror. I'm going to click these sides that I want to mirror and then I'm going to hit this mirror line select. I'm going to choose this one and it appears right away. I hit okay. We're good to go. We don't need that center line anymore. I'm going to hit T to trim and I'm going to make it go away. And that was it. Uh oh, that warning, don't need to worry about it. Don't worry about it. And there's our shape. This is our gift tag right here. And I think, I think we have what we need. Now what we need to do is make a little hole at the top. And the hole at the top is where things go. So like ribbons and such. So I'm gonna bring it out and I'm gonna hit five. There we go. I'm gonna make it five millimeters. And I'm gonna put it right about there. Actually where I had it was good. The last thing left to do is to bring in our design. So I'm gonna go insert. I have an SVG prepared. I'm gonna bring in my high five. And, uh, oh, what is, what is this? Oh, this is for another project. Pay no mind to this. Let's choose a different SVG. Oh, there. How about this one? Oh, that's so much better. So when you bring in your SVG, you can resize it using this little control right here. And then you place it exactly where you want it to go. And I kind of like it right there. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to stop my sketch because that's it. That's it right there. I'm going to hit E to extrude. I'm going to pick this right here. And I'm going to hit two millimeters. And I'm going to say yes to a new body. And I'm going to hit OK. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. You've just designed the most simple gift tag you possibly can. You can add some fillets around the sign to round it off, but I don't need to show you how to do that because I think by now you've probably learned how to do that. But I don't think we're done yet. Here's where it gets fun. Let's go back to this sketch, make it visible. I'm gonna select this part of the sketch. I'm gonna hit E, I'm gonna hit two. But now when I go over here, instead of join, I'm gonna make sure new body is selected. So now I've got this and I've got this. And what I can do is go make 3D print. I don't need to send to a utility. Refinement is high. I'm gonna hit okay. And then what I can do is save this as gift tag uh, base.stl. 
And then I'm gonna click this, my hand. I'm gonna go make 3D print. It's good to go here. And I'm gonna call it gift tag hand.stl. That's it. We've just created a dual extrusion gift tag model. And I'll show you how to load that up into a slicer in just a moment. But now remember that multi-line, multi-color one? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that one next. So over here on the sketch, I'm gonna go edit sketch. I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna hit Command or Control C, Command or Control V. There we go. And after I do that, then I can bring it over. I'm gonna hit okay. So now I've got a copy of my sketch right next to the other one. So if I, if I hit stop sketch, you can see that my extrusions here are here and the sketch copied over, but not the things I did to 3 d -ify it. So what we need to do, well, is the same thing as we did before. So let's click this, hit E, two millimeters, and I'm gonna hit okay. And for the hand, I'm gonna hit E, two, and then I'm gonna go over here to join and make sure it says new body and hit okay. Here's where it gets kind of fun. So originally I was having some problems with this, but thank the good Lord, Angus was available he gave me a tip. He said, instead of uh, thinking of a sweep, what you can do is a patch extrusion. It's powerful, let me show you. To do a patch extrusion, you need to go into the patch workspace, which is right over here. Once this is open, go to your line, and let's just start making one right on this plane. So I'm gonna bring it over this way. I want it to be here. Yep, 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 okay. I'm gonna go up to here. And then I'm gonna make it come down this way. Let's see, it's at 77 degrees, so that's good. This way. Now, there are ways of being more exact about this. I'm just for the sake of time showing you how to do it rather quickly. But you get the idea. I'm making these lines that zigzag back and forth across the model. Okay, hit escape when you're done you have this line in the patch workspace that you then need to extrude. So create, extrude, pick the line you just made and bring it down a bit. And if you look, let's see, where are we at? Oh, the line actually needs to go up a bit. So let's bring it up. There we go, we'll go three millimeters even though we're at two for the height of the model. See how it intersects the model? That's exactly what we want. And we want it to be a new body. I'm gonna hit okay. Now, back in the model workspace, you can go modify, split body. So the body to split is this. Your splitting tool is this patch extrusion you made. Hit okay. And now look, you have all of these new bodies show up on the left side. And if you turn off, that tool, you can see that now you have all of these new pieces to play with. And each one of these pieces can be exported as an STL file. I've already shown you how to save off as an STL, so it's up to you to save these pieces as STL files and you name them however you want. But let me show you what I did. All right, I've got the Prusa Multi-Material Slicer up and going, so I'm gonna hit Add. I've got my dual, my base, and my hand that I saved before. It's saying multiple objects were loaded for a multi-material printer. Instead of considering them as a multiple objects, should I consider these parts to represent a single object having multiple parts? Yes, you should. I'm gonna hit yes. So here is our, it's called it the dual base.stl, but if you double click it, you've got the base and you've got the hand. So the base, you can assign an extruder. The hand, you can assign another extruder. And after you slice it, go to preview there you go this is the model this is how it would print and here is your purge block it's not too bad but wait what about that other one well let's let's move that and let's add it in so I saved it as quad because I wanted to be quad colored and each of the rows were assigned a number and each of the parts were of the rows were assigned a letter I know it gets complicated but let me load it all up and I'll show you Yes, again. So here is what it brought in, and when I double click it, here is all of the pieces that it then loaded up. And 
one, you can assign it to this extruder, but two, you can assign it to all of these twos you can assign to the second extruder, the threes you can assign to the third extruder. But in order for colors to work out, the fourth you want to save for the hand. So for the fourth, you're back to one. Yes, it does get a little tedious, but it's well worth it in the end. All right, and then let's see, fives to two. At this point in time, there's no way to automatically do this. Maybe that's a feature request. Joseph Prusha. All right, here's seven. So seven's gonna go back to one. Eight to two, nine to three. And the hand we want on extruder four. I'm gonna hit okay. So now when we slice it and we go to preview, there it is. This is our four color gift tag, which looks incredible. Oh, I love it. Oh, but it gets even better from here. So when you're in Fusion and you have yourself some sketches right over here. So this sketch over here, what you can do is right click and save it as a DXF file. So we'll call it uh, tag.dxf. Easy enough. All right, now what you can do is bring up Adobe Illustrator and you can open that DXF file. And you want to scale it one unit equals one millimeter. Because remember, we're working in millimeters in Fusion 360. So one unit equals one millimeter. Hit OK. It brings it in. Oh, that's right, because I had both of them in there. So what I can do, I don't need them both. I can select that one, I can delete it. But I've got myself this awesome little model right here that I could work on just a little bit and then I could send it. Oh, my mouse is dying. I'm telling you kids, it's the problem with wireless mice. They die. Here we go, we're back in business. All right, the mouse is no longer dying. You do need to join up these paths and, well, let me show you. So first, let's select everything that's on the hand here. And I'm gonna go object, path, join. And this joins all those tiny little paths that, that Fusion gave us into one contiguous path. This circle is already a path. These lines on the outside are not. So holding down shift, I'm going to select each one. And let's see. I think, did I get them all? I think I got them all. So then I'm gonna go object, path, and join. So there we go. The outer path is contiguous. This circle is contiguous and the hand is contiguous. And this is essential for what we're going to do next. Go file, save as, and you're going to save it as an SVG. Let's see, tag.svg. And it's important, SVG profiles, SVG 1.1. At least that's what works for me. If you do export as SVG, uh, the scale is off. So now with something like easel, you go import, you go SVG, and then there's your tag. You can select it, and here it is. And now you can play with it. You can do your settings here, you can do your settings here, you can do your settings here, and then it shows you what it's gonna cut like, or what it's gonna look like, and well, I already did some of this, so let me show you. First, I remember I showed you these right here. So here's my little high five hand, and here's this cut out of the CNC machine, and those turned out, those turned out really good. But there are more. When I first started out, I did this, and it was too thick, and it really didn't work out so well. So then I tried dual extrusion, but I didn't do it all the way, and you can. Well, you can kind of see how, you can almost see the hand through there, but essentially it was just an inlaid hand that was printed in place. Uh, I then did it without the hand inlay in place, and then did, I did a whole bunch of them, just like this. Then we took it over to the Prusa machine, and for a very tiny little purge block like that, we were able to do some cool stuff. So here is that multicolor one that turned out just really good. And then because I had some room on the build plate, I made these ones. I made these ones and these, these are kind of fun right here. I also of course used my Carvey and these came out, they're not scaled right. And that was just part of the learning process. So there's that one, it's scaled right. But I did, I had to learn a little bit because I was dragging the bit through the wood too fast. So it's just another thing I need to learn. And I see and seed some hands too, why not? Why not, right? 
There we go. Look at that. I made a pile of gift tags. It was easier than I thought. It required a little bit of learning, like um, the save as from Illustrator rather than the export in order to get the correct dimensions. And originally trying to do a sweep within Fusion instead of doing the patch extrusion like Angus explained. Well, I'm really happy with how all of these turned out. And we now have plenty of gift tags that everybody will know who they come from. And for me to be able to make more, it's not a problem at all. I hope I showed you a way to make some custom gift tags that show your personality or, or who you are. You can always add your logo or a name or something awesome like that. I hope I've inspired you to make something cool. It's just a lot of fun doing this sort of thing. And if you don't have a printer or you don't have time or you want your own high five gift tags, you can go to the 3dprintingnerd.com forward slash shop and I will make these a free download in my eShop. So there you go. I'll make a zip file. It'll have the SVGs. It'll have the DXF file. It'll have the STLs. You should be totally good to go. What are you waiting for? Go load up uh, Fusion 360 or some design software and design yourself some really cool gift tags and get prepared for all of the gifts that you're going to be giving to all your loved ones. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and to ring that bell for when unfortunately wired stuff is uploaded to the channel. And a big thanks for everyone's support on all the various platforms such as Patreon, YouTube Red, YouTube sponsorship, and um, PayPal support through my website. And shoot, thanks for watching the ads as well. I really appreciate it. Finally, don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. As always, high five.